So hello everybody from uh, Loan Office of Vondo Finance, a Spanish uh, lending company for consumer loans. On my side is uh, Iveta, Edwards and also Indrek uh, on the monitor. Unfortunately he made it not to the office in uh, Madrid because of some uh, private issues. Uh, well, there have been some issues about this uh, <laughs> panel we organized here. Uh, we already planned it in uh, 2020 in March but I guess Everybody on this world knows what happened in uh, March 2020. Yes. Uh, so uh, we tried to still stick to that, but we had to postpone it. And finally, now in January 2024, we made it, most of us at least, um, <laughs> to uh, Madrid in the office. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, and as you know, I'm always very uh, curious about uh, my investments and I try to get more information about that. I'm an uh, investor since many, many years, so it's like from the beginning of Swapper and uh, investing always in the Wondo Finance loans. So I have to be honest, I only invest in Wondo Finance uh, through Swapper. Mm -hmm. Of course, I do investments in B2B in other, on other platforms, but um, Swapper only Wondo Finance and it's in, indeed, my major investment currently in the B2B industry. So I have the biggest amount invested currently in Wondo Finance loans compared to any other B2B platform or loan originator. So it will be very exciting for me also to get the news and it's very important for me because depending on that I will make my decision to decrease, uh, leave, increase, hopefully, let's see, uh, my investments and I'm also looking forward to exchange with our community which is also very important. Uh, for me. So, but anyway, a lot of talking to the start, so let's dive straight into the interview. I will I try to structure it uh, in advance, so it's not completely confused, but as people know me, I try to make it like also spontaneous questions, which might occur during the exchange, and I would also invite all of you, if you want to add something, just to like uh, do it. This is the reason why I wanted to have all in one panel, because there was this well, there have been some rumors happened uh, in, uh, in uh, June at the P2B conference uh, about the ownership and all that. And I think now we have all people in one room to clarify everything um, regarding this as well. But structure, first things first. So I would like to start with a short introduction uh, where you all introduce yourself and your position in the company, like if it is Swapper, if it is uh, Bondo Finance, uh, so yeah, and, and also about the, the ownership will be the next question, obviously. Uh, who wants to start? Okay, may I? <laughs> I guess so. Okay, so uh, I'm the founder of Bondo Finance uh, and uh, the company was founded in 2016, so it's been almost eight years now. Uh, and uh, originally, um, we also had uh, as our subsidiary uh, Swapper, uh, which was the platform that we built uh, in the beginning from the scratch. I think it was 2017, beginning of 2017 or maybe end of 2016, basically in the beginning. And Swapper should, uh, used to be our subsidiary, used to be our, uh, our company, our platform, uh, but not anymore since 2019. Uh, in 2019 it was sold. Uh, to Estonia and, uh, to Estonia. and uh, basically uh, today uh, Swapper platform is represented by Indrek. He's the only one who didn't ma make it here. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, yeah, I, I, I am a founder and, uh, and uh, Eduard. Uh, yes, uh, I am the Spanish country manager for Rwanda, Spain. I've uh, been in the company five years uh, and uh, I'm very happy to be working in the same team uh, with Iveta uh, because she has built the, the group uh, on the family foundation. So it's really like a family company. It's not a big corporate institution. So it's uh, having a very strong values. And I'm very happy to, to work uh, in Amando. Thank you. And maybe Indirek, uh, you can introduce yourself as well, please. Yes. So, uh, hi guys. It's, uh, a pity that I cannot be in, in Spain uh, to meet the face, the face but um, let's try to w make it work it in this way. So, my name is Indra Polakan. Um, I am a CEO of Swapper Platform. And uh, basically, as uh, you as I told, uh, when Swapper was sold to Estonia, then uh, 
uh, COVID hit and everything like that. And after that, I, I joined the company um, in, in order to, uh, you know, make it uh, bigger and, um, and also to, uh, you know, to get everything done according to Estonian laws and stuff like that. So that's why I joined. Uh, my work is, you know, to, to manage the company and handle every basic issue that we have. And also uh, now with, with the new uh, setup and new things that we're doing, I'm also in charge of the, the Swap Per Daughter company that we will probably discuss uh, along the way as well during the, today's interview. Okay, thank you so much for the introduction and uh, I always try to recap a little bit and summarize everything to understand it but also to make it maybe more transparent for the uh, viewers. So for all those who are like on the screen right now to understand it, uh, we are sitting now in the Spanish loan office uh, in Madrid but the headquarter of Fondo Finance is in Riga okay. uh, and uh, Indrek is uh, here online from Tallinn which is uh, the office of uh, Swapper. Yeah? Um, exactly. Just to clarify that also for the viewers. Um, and uh, now to proceed to the first like uh, chilly question uh, which occurred in uh, last June. There was a big surprise in the audience, uh, I think especially in the German community, where somehow I don't want to blame anybody, but we missed that Swapper was sold. Yeah? Indrek, uh, you remember the time at the B2B conference, we were like super surprised when we heard uh, yeah. Iveta is no more the, the owner. And I think I want to use this opportunity to clarify it in the whole uh, community of private investors. Um, so maybe let's quote it like that. Uh, when was Swapper sold? And maybe you can also be already talked it like uh, without the camera about it uh, in the evening. It was very really interesting for me. But so maybe you can also summarize that. Why was it sold? Uh, at what point? And now also to clarify the structure, who is the owner of Wondo Finance and who is the owner of uh, Swapper. Okay, sure. Uh, I'll probably uh, start, Indrek, you can comment. I think you joined a bit mm -hmm. later, if I remember right. But uh, from, a, from uh, our perspective, uh, basically Swapper uh, platform, uh, all the IT solution, mobile app, everything, uh, was built out by our IT team, uh, Wondo Finance IT team, and uh, we also had a legal entity uh, registered in Latvia in the beginning uh, when we started uh, Swapper uh, platform. Uh, it was registered in Latvia. It was subsidiary full, like 100% subsidiary of Wando Finance. So it was within the group. Uh, and then I think it was August 2019 uh, when the sale deal happened. Uh, it was, uh, yes, it was summer 2019. Uh, and. Uh, the reasoning for that was that uh, there were uh, upcoming regulation in Latvia, regulation of peer-to-peer uh, -peer platforms. Uh, I also, uh, when, when the information, uh, like when we received information that regulation is coming, I was meeting uh, our regulator in Latvia to find out uh, about, like, to find out more details how the, how the platforms will be regulated, what are the requirements and everything. Um, so, uh, to be honest, for us, uh, Swapper platform is much, much uh, smaller than other platforms uh, registered in Latvia now. So, from our perspective, at that point of time, uh, the regulation, uh, it was too expensive. It was too big for such a small platform, such a small company. And uh, uh, so, this was the moment when we started to look for the other options. Um, and Estonia originally, because uh, in, the, in the beginning I didn't even have a thought to sell uh, the platform or the, or the company. Uh, but um, uh, Estonia originally is much more fintech friendly than Latvia is. All the licenses, all the regulation in fintech industry is much more reasonable in terms that you can stay fintech. You are not uh, trying to be pushed closer to the bank regulation or whatever. So it's much more reasonable from the business model perspective from any regulation in the, in the fintech um, in Estonia. So that was the reason why we started to look uh, to, to, to the Estonia. Uh, and they also are planning to have a licensing in Estonia and they still do. Maybe Indra can later update on that. But uh, when we were like 
planning to move the platform to Estonia. We found out that uh, the platforms will be regulated also in Estonia. Uh, we look at the draft, there was some draft of the law, how the regula regulation will look. And, and it seemed much more reasonable because in Latvia they didn't create a regulation like new licensing for peer-to-peer -peer platforms. They put the peer-to-peer -peer platforms under brokerage license. I don't, don't remember the specific name of the license. So, uh, and it kind of, if you compare the process on Swapper platform, how it works from, for, from investor's perspective and how it works from regulated platforms in Latvia, it's much, much more complicated. It, it's like, it, it, in the beginning, it was even hard to understand how to adjust to that regulation, not to break the business model at all. And of course, big players at that time, it was easier for them uh, to find a solution and we were not in that position. Uh, but yes, um, so uh, somehow, uh, we, we, when we started looking to Estonia, uh, somehow uh, the, the sale deal came up uh, and the company was sold to uh, basically, uh, the, the sole owner at this moment is Marina Tulanova, Tjul uh, uh, hard uh, surname, but um, basically she is also one of the owners of Neotech Development and Neotech Development is a minor shareholder of Vandu Finance. So this is how we knew each other uh, and we knew each other even before that. Uh, so that was uh, how it went because uh, I was going to Estonia to meet the lawyers, to meet the regulator, to understand what, what is the licensing there. And I was co coming to her and then somehow we, we came up with this deal and, uh, and basically this is how it happened. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, not, uh, we're, we're not planning that in the beginning. Uh, we were planning to, to move platform and, and leave it as it is, but in the end, uh, the deal, is, the deal was quite good uh, and we realized that we can still, from our perspective, from perspective of Fondo Finance, uh, we can still use the platform, we can still work like we did, uh, but we don't have to be responsible for the biggest part, which is licensing, dealing with the regulator and so on. So at that moment, uh, from my perspective, it was uh, even a great uh, deal and great decision uh, and I still do not regret it because time has passed and uh, we see how regulation in Latvia uh, have turned out. Uh, of course it's good from an uh, investor's perspective and I do, don't doubt that, uh, that you invest in a platform that is regulated uh, but again if we are fintech it's uh, kind of hard to stay fintech and it's hard to stay flexible, hard to stay uh, Fintech in general, if, if the regulation is very heavy and it's still very expensive in Latvia. So uh, from our perspective, I do not regret this, th that decision because we could not, uh, we could not uh, take those costs on us definitely. So, and when the regulation comes in Estonia, I believe that uh, here Indek could comment more. Uh, he probably knows the, the update, but uh, if, we, if there will be a regulation, of course, uh, yeah, yeah. Indirect, maybe you. Let, let, let me really also <laughs> yeah. uh, recap on that already and, and yeah. summarize it a bit because we will get to straight questions on Bondo Finance next and also on Swapper uh, following that. Um, but as, uh, as I understand it, it was a very attractive uh, offer for you it as the owner of Bondo yeah. Finance, I guess, uh, also financially. And then we said, okay, uh, I, I do it. Yeah. Plus, and, and from the practical point of view, you can still use the platform. You still have, you, you have gained some trust of investors. You still can offer your loans, but you have, don't have to deal with the heavy stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. there's it, someone who is willing to do that. So from my perspective... It, uh, it was just a huge surprise for us at the B2B conference uh, last June and uh, so also a lot of rumors and worries uh, spread it immediately but I think now we have the chance and six months later you know everything settled and now we have the chance to uh, to work through that and understand it all and I think it was also really a communication problem. Uh, somehow I don't want to blame any side yeah, but at the time it was solved especially to the German audience, I think, yeah, because uh, I saw later in the internet that some bloggers from other countries uh, made reports about it, but mm -hmm. some of it did not recognize it, yeah? even Lars uh, and, and so on, so like the really huge ones. I'm, my perspective to do is it's just like a purpose from a private investor perspective, yeah? but also like the, the influencers, even they did not really uh, recognize it, I think. Yeah? Yes, we, um, we already discussed it. I mean, 
we we send out the information somehow some part got, got it some part didn't and it was kind of surprise to us uh, as well because i i believe indirectly or during the conference uh, i'm not sure if you could comment on something because he wasn't there in that moment so when when the sale deal happened uh, and we did uh, inform everyone and, and we see that uh, there was information some bloggers were you were right some bloggers were writing about it and well, it's hard to explain how it happened because we did did send out but information, but maybe some. So. But I, I don't want to circle around too much yeah, about this sure. uh, topic right now sure. because we discussed it already. But uh, I think it's still also important for all of us. So um, uh, to summarize it, maybe from investors' perspective, uh, I wish maybe you could also clarify the bit. In, uh, and this is a message to indirect as well. Uh, maybe it's possible to clarify it like in the block entry on the Swapper platform. Uh, which is just uh, showing the ownership of Wondo Finance and uh, Swapper, uh, so that it's just clarified some 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 kind of uh, story or something like that. Yeah. Um, because now, when you check the Swapper website, there is no information about the ownership to be easy found. Because Marina just describes herself. I don't remember exactly, but I think it's operational uh, management or something, but not as an owner. Uh, yeah, so, sorry to interrupt. And I would um, add, add here also that um, that we on the Swapper platform we were transparent in a way that we have, that, for example, the annual reports that displayed on the website, which which has like, quite a lot of information in it. And uh, we have in annual reports from 2019, so basically when the sale happened, the whole company was um, established in Estonia. And uh, as um, even the told, you know, Estonia is a, like a IT advanced uh, and this annual report has also the information about the owner uh, with the name, with the percentage, etc. etc. So, you know, I, I you know, invite all investors to check the annual reports and, and see also this information because what we do, we also have like one part of the annual report is like the, uh, like the management report where we say actually what happened during the, uh, during the year. Uh, with with you know uh, charts and, and the statistics also there, so it's a good place to get uh, information, uh, which is uh, how to say it, not like a legal information, but it's official information that we also submit to our registry each year. So uh, it's it's um, valid information to have. Yeah, yeah, makes absolute sense, and I agree absolutely on that. Uh, but maybe for the you know for the common retail private investor, it's sometimes the to be honest, so many platforms, so many launches, not everybody reads all the reports. Yeah? Maybe we should not do that. I 100% agree. Yes, it's correct. But I think it would help just like the first view is always the website. Yeah? So maybe you can just put like a uh, nice, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but nice page here yeah, where you can find the, uh, the description also of the ownership. Maybe you just add on under the picture of Marina also owner. Or something like that. It would already have to clarify it, I think, if she's okay with that. Um, however, maybe some straight uh, questions to Wonder Finance and then to Swapper. So, uh, we, yeah, I would like to directly ask you who are the owners of Wonder Finance? You are the majority owner, but I think there are also some minor owners. Can we name them? Please? Of course, uh, of course, and this, uh, um, okay. Uh, we have uh, last, uh, basically during the last month, I think it was uh, end of December, uh, we had the last changes in the structure of uh, shareholding of, uh, of Wando Finance. And basically, uh, Latvian company is a holding company. Uh, holding company owns Spanish entity, it owns Polish entities, uh, and it also owns Romania. Uh, so it's a holding company within the structure. So. Uh, as concerns Wandu Finance Latvia, uh, uh, so my share is 70% I own directly as an individual, uh, 8, 7 point or 8 point something percent I own through my company where I'm the only shareholder. The name of the company is MC Solutions. Uh, so the part uh, part of uh, basically around eight percent I own through the company, but I'm the only shareholder in that company. So altogether, it's somewhere around uh, eighty percent, uh, almost eighty percent. I'm the main shareholder of the company, and I have uh, we have two m minor shareholders, 
Uh, and uh, the last change that happened, uh, one of the ma minor shareholders is Neotech Development, Estonian company, uh, where also Marina is one of the owners. Uh, and they have uh, been owning until December somewhere around 7 point something percent. Uh, and in December we, we uh, had, had the last change. And at this moment they own somewhere around 13-14% altogether because they made additional equity investment in the amount of 2.3 million uh, in December 2023, basically a month ago. Uh, so they uh, increased their share uh, from 7 something to 13% approximately. Uh, this is the last, uh, those are the last changes that happen uh, in the shareholding structure. And we have also one more uh, shareholder, minor sh shareholder, it's below 10%, so it's somewhere around also 7% of the company. It belongs to Entere Investments. It's also, um, basically they also are, uh, they know each other uh, with Marina and that's how we know that company. And they were actually the ones who made the first equity investment after COVID, uh, when we had quite turbulent times, and uh, they were the ones who basically gave us first three millions in exchange of 7% of the company, and that gave us the possibility to restart the business after COVID. Uh, so we have one minor shareholder be below 10%, enter investment, and it's there since 2021, I think it was end of 2021. And uh, Neotic was there before with 7% and now they increased uh, their sharehold, th their sh shares uh, to, thank you, to uh, some 13% point something. Uh, so that deal happened a month ago. Congratulations to that deal, sounds good. Yeah, um, it was... Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, so you already answered also the next question is the percentage. But uh, I have another straight question. Um, you are so you have the majority as owner, uh, but uh, you kind of went in the background and changed your occupation a bit in the company. So you are no more the CEO of Ondo Finance. But uh, we already have a lot of names here in this panel, but we don't know the CEO mm -hmm. now, uh, or we didn't name him, we know him, but we didn't name him yes. uh, in the interview uh, of Wondo Finance. So maybe you can talk a bit about the CEO of Wondo Finance. Of uh, for the first uh, four years almost, I was also an acting CEO of the company, not only the founder. Uh, but at some point uh, it become too much uh, for one person to handle. Of course, I have a team, I always have uh, very dedicated and loyal team and uh, and uh, but uh, still uh, I decided to have a CEO and the first CEO joined Bandu in 2020 uh, somewhere around the moment when the COVID pandemic started uh, but uh, well he was with us almost three years and this summer he left uh, Bandu and uh, this summer we basically uh, uh, found the replacement of the CEO uh, and now uh, CEO of Vandu Finance is Krishan Znotic. Uh, he's, he, he joined us in, I think, mid-August, somewhere in the middle of August. Uh, and uh, his experience comes from a living uh, group. He was working there and leading uh, bus Latvian businesses for a living. Several products, several uh, business lines there. Uh, before that, he was working in uh, Luminor Bank or DNB uh, Bank uh, previously. So he has, uh, well, all his experience comes from the finance field. Uh, and uh, yes, he was, uh, he was, he was, he basically joined recently, but he already feels, I think, like at home and knows everything and every little detail. So, yeah, I used to be the CEO as well, but uh, at, some at some point it was uh, a bit too much. So my role uh, have changed since then, since then, because uh, Mm, then I was dealing with the daily operations uh, and, and very much into the details of everything. I still know the details, but probably not that deep anymore. And uh, my uh, role is now more thinking about development of the company, uh, new markets, I'm meeting uh, people, I'm going to networking events, I'm trying to understand how 
um, how we could develop the business, which markets we should go. I'm trying to collect the information in all possible ways about how each market is performing. Uh, I'm also the one who is more thinking about investor relations and not uh, only Swapper because uh, we, we have also uh, other directions how we attract investors uh, and we have started a few different directions. So this is the, the thing what I'm doing lately. I'm not that much in operational things, um, but still, of course, I, I know it all, almost all. But, uh, but yeah, I, I moved uh, away from that and, and thinking about development more than, rather than anything else. I have some more questions in my mind uh, yeah. coming up after, sure. the event, after that, but I want to stick first to the straight questions okay. because uh, now a question about the employees in total. This is also um, to indirect maybe a little bit because uh, if we look on the Swapper website, it was just confusing, you explained it already, but I want to have it in the interview as well. Um, so the Swapper website, it says like 48 employees uh, in the description of the loan originator want to finance. And if I check the website of Wondo Finance, it says 117. So Swapper says 48 employees of Wondo, uh, at Wondo Finance, and uh, Wondo Finance is 117. So how is it possible? Both are right. <laughs> okay. Both are right, meaning that uh, on, on Swapper website, I believe uh, those are the loan originators that are uh, offered on uh, Swapper, so uh, Poland and Spain. Those were the consumer loans that were offered on the platform and uh, if we take uh, offices in Poland and Spain, it's somewhere around 30 people in each office. I think uh, maybe it's a bit outdated. Uh, it's uh, How many employees in Spain now? 26. 26 and in Spain or in Poland I think it's 28. And the number 117 uh, comes from the whole group because you probably check the group website yes. uh, and mm -hmm. that uh, that calculates together Polish office, Spanish office, office in Romania which we already have for one year and also a headquarter in Riga where we have the main um, mm, the biggest amount of, uh, of people actually somewhere around 50 at this moment and we have a lot of uh, functions centralized like finance, uh, risk, uh, scoring, analytics, marketing uh, accounting, like all of those things are centralized and they're happening in Riga, so most part of the people are there. Also IT team who develops all the systems uh, that we are using on, uh, on one of the fi finance side to, to issue loans, so those are our internal systems. And uh, the biggest part of employees are in, in uh, headquarter. And that's all together, together with Poland, Spain, Romania, Riga, 117 and I think it's 118 already. So. Hearing that it makes sense, yeah, but if you just see the different figures on yeah. both, both websites as a private investor, uh, you, you, you start um, being curious about it. Okay, so thank you very much for that. Uh, and now we come to the straight questions to Swapper. Um, first of all, we now know the details about the one to finance about the ownership, but who are the concrete owners of Swapper right now? Is it 100% Marina or is there some percentage uh, still from, from, from somebody else? Do you still own something? But I think the question goes to... I, I can take that, yeah. Uh, Swapper platform OU, which is the legal name of the company, so this is um, ownership is quite uh, straightforward and simple. It's Marina Giulianova and she owns 100% uh, of, of uh, Swapper platform OU as a private person, so it's not like an indirect ownership, it's a direct ownership. I understand, so this also changed a bit the system, uh, I now want to come back to that because it makes sense at this point, because before um, it was like in-house financing, it was the same company, and 2019 it changed like it's a separated loan agent uh, with advantages and with disadvantages it's come, that come with that. Um, I experienced uh, so far that it makes sense also if it is in-house um, just by the track history. Why? Because on the platforms that have this in-house financing, I have never had any issues. And this is something that's also very positive to mention about Swapper uh, also now that it is one of the rare platforms where I had never any issues in so many years when I'm investing there. And this is a, a, a reason that I always mention when people ask me why are you investing in Swapper uh, and why are you like investing such a 
huge amount on Swapper compared to the other platforms um, is I mentioned, well, maybe I don't know so much about them, but this is the reason why I'm here, I try to find out more. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I can say is, just from what I saw, I never had any issue uh, with the repayments, not, in, not during uh, COVID times, not during uh, the war uh, now. It's just working and I have a return as a loyal investor of 16% interest, uh, which is uh, compared to the competitors uh, quite attractive. Yeah? Uh, and 14% I think it is for the investors that, that are not in the loyal uh, program. So, uh, but to come back to the swap uh, question, it changed 2019 that it's obviously as you told right now 100% separated from the ownership, which is maybe also an advantage because now there is no kind of interest conflict, at least in this matter, because it's two separated companies. Yeah? So maybe I want to add another question, which is not in my catalog, but it spontaneously came, is the monitoring. Yeah? The monitoring is different now because it's not in-house. It's the responsibility of Swapper right now to monitor um, what is going on at Mondo Finance? Maybe you can uh, tell us something about your monitoring on uh, the Mondo Finance Group, which is very important for us um, mm -hmm. as an uh, investor. Oh. True. Uh, yeah, monitoring is very important. And as you <coughs> mentioned also that we, before we start actually monitoring and stuff, we, we were also thinking about the payments and all these things that are, you know, kind of um, promised to the investors. So we're very, very how to say it, straightforward with uh, payments on time and all these things inside the company. But with the monitoring and, and, and these kind of parts, then we are, uh, what we regularly do is that we have a monthly reports about the loan performances. It also includes the information from Mandu about the payments of the borrowers, when it was done, how many days it was late, uh, uh, and all, all the other information uh, besides uh, besides like the when it was paid or how much was paid so we're tracking that this part and also like the buyback that we have that you know this works nicely so basically uh, there is a, like a big excel file created each month uh, that we check and and uh, and any other issues during the month that we have we you know pick up the phone or make the teams meeting and ask them, hey so what's the status with that uh, any issues uh, or, or, or something like that and we had a, like a very good um, just practice during and, and after the COVID when we had like a weekly meetings to go over uh, the stats of the last week to check how it's performing do we need to change something because what I, what I, what I remember you know I wasn't in the, in the company yet but you know I, I went after I joined I learned that one to quite fast uh, to say close the the the, the pipe uh, to uh, issue um, loans so uh, they were quite fast to um, uh, react to the COVID and, and not issue that many loans which uh, financially was um, a very good decision um, because you know it was a lot of uncertainty at the time and, and then you know after this weekly meetings that we we had uh, you know, working with the loan originators uh, to know how much we're gonna fund next week or next month, how much, what's the plan for them. So the, all this kind of monitoring that we uh, were doing, and we are going actually continuing to do that, but we, we don't have like a weekly meetings that often anymore uh, because it's been unsettled. But we do have uh, monthly reports that we're checking. And going over and any uh, any issue that we have there we discuss and also what we do is that in order to plan swap for things we need the plans from uh, Wando so we're discussing this thing also that goes with how much they're thinking to uh, add um, uh, as a loans and also maybe it's not a topic here at the moment but uh, like even the told there is a new company uh, want to uh, open up is a Romania, but we don't have Romania loans on, on Swapper yet. But this is something that you know we we have an um, agreement that they will work out the uh, loans on uh, Romania and, and adjust like the credit scoring and everything. And that the business is making money there, 
and then they can join as well for, and we can discuss these things. So this is uh, also that we're cautious about and, and uh, need to make sure that the loan originator who we are adding is making money and that these kind of steps make the monitoring easier that we don't have to solve issues later when we have any issues or something like that. So. I don't know, I, I maybe went too far, but... No, no, thank you. It's, uh, it's, very, it's interesting <laughs> for me, yeah, and, and you know, the point is that for me as a private investor, things that are obvious for all of you guys, it's not so obvious for me because I'm not so much into that. It's just a fact, yeah, because, uh, of course, uh, we all, I guess also most of the viewers, we have a diversified uh, portfolio, yeah, mm -hmm. with an uh, very solid asset allocation, and this is just one of many assets uh, most uh, private investors have, so... Um, but this is the reason why it's uh, even more exciting for me to talk about it and try to get this information and, and understand it better, what I do here. Yeah? Um, but as I understand it, so the monitoring, um, the risk uh, department is a very uh, important uh, part, uh, especially for the platform, for uh, the P2P platforms. And now it is separated uh, for Swapper also in the due diligence to um, uh, Wondo Finance Group. Uh, meanwhile, also there are some other loan originators uh, available on uh, the Swapper platform, but I don't want to talk too much about that in this interview. Well, why? First of all, because the panel is uh, focused on Swapper and on the finance, but uh, also uh, because I do these uh, interviews not as like an influencer, I do it from my private interest as an investor, and I only invest currently in the uh, Wonder Loans on uh, Swapper. But anyway, it comes to the question, you need uh, a team, a good team, to do this monitoring. Yeah? This important part uh, which the platform does in uh, the interest of the investors. Why I mentioned that? Because uh, I was missing that sometimes, and I'm still missing that sometimes on other platforms, um, the, the part and the responsibility a platform, a P2B platform has for the monitoring and the risk department. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, so I would like to ask as a next three questions, how many employees um, does Swapper have in total currently and who is responsible for this uh, due diligence monitoring uh, risk uh, uh, matters? Swapper currently has, um, well, let me count because we have a couple persons on a maternity leave uh, <laughs> as such. So uh, I would say uh, four, uh, I would say five employees, uh, which is like on a like official, on a like a pay payroll employees as such, and uh, with the monitoring and, and these things, we have um, a person who is who has a background of, of checking that or working with the loan originators that we are. Uh, that we have uh, working for Swapper, so uh, he's checking uh, more in details here, but also with the risk and uh, like a legal and compliance risk, then we have head of legal uh, also working, uh, and, and she's checking like all the contracts, but also AML things, and uh, making sure the contracts are nicely done and according to the um, regulation. And on top of that, I'm also checking uh, the regulation that uh, that is something that we need to also obey with a with a new company as such. So, but we uh, established. So it's it's a uh, it, it really depends on also like what's what's the business model there that we are using because uh, as you know like last uh, I think it was last year we changed uh, a bit of the business model there. But uh, yeah, that's. That's how it is. So five employees is uh, not so much compared to other platforms, but we should also understand, mm -hmm. I think, that, for example, the IT is kind of outsourced mm -hmm. also to the company yeah. of Marina, to the other company she owns, yeah, as well as uh, still Wondo Finance helps, I think, a bit with the IT. Is this correct? Yes, we do okay. help. Uh, we do. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Whoever yeah. Was, sorry. <laughs> Cor yeah, let, let me go. Uh, correct, yeah, on top, on top of the employees, we have also like services, for example, you know, uh, as, as, um, as we are like a not so big, so it, it's not, for each role, we might not have a full-time 
position or, or work to give. So that's why we uh, are buying the services. For example, accounting and these kind of services we're buying in, so we don't have employed for that. And also for IT, uh, Wandu is, is uh, we have a contract with Wandu because uh, uh, it's a system that Wandu has built. We decided uh, that uh, because we made the calculations for the monetary values, if we hire an IT person, for example, then how much do we need to pay and how much work we would have in order to maintain the system or make a new features. Uh, and we came to the conclusion that it's uh, financially cheaper and more convenient to um, use a one to uh, IT uh, like person for that from time to time because we don't have that many changes in IT perspective and also when we have one employee that means that we are putting a lot of risk for that one uh, IT guy in order to when there's some I don't know, mess up in the system or, or, or something happens with the payments, we need to fa act fast. So that's why the, the risk wise, it, it, when we have just one employee who I don't know, is on vacation or, on, or is, um, I don't know, uh, falls sick or something. So that's why it was a decision made like that. And from our side, uh, employees supporting Swapper system are the ones who actually built it many years ago. They still are okay. with us, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and from uh, from the lo workload perspective, there's not even one full uh, person needed uh, every month. Yes, of course, when the changes comes, for example, in December, we did change a lot also on our side, yeah. and uh, changes required also on the swapper side, uh, system-wise, to support uh, product changes and everything that happened. Uh, that in that period of time, of course, yes, there was a lot of development, a lot of changes and a lot of work needed, but we have quite extensive IT team. So for that specific moment, we, we relocated the resources uh, that Swapper needed, but in general, uh, in like month to month uh, life, it's not even one full IT person needed to support the system, to maintain and, and fix the things that have to be Correct. fixed. Uh, so. Okay, yeah, makes sense and also the, the team knows it from the scratch as they built it, so it's maybe easy to, uh, easier or, or better if they uh, stick to that. Okay, so then I have some questions that we already covered spontaneously, so I don't need to ask again for the reason for the legal address of the different offices, we already covered it in um, the last questions. And also it can be found on all uh, websites, uh, so it's very transparent, I think, in this uh, matter. But uh, I come to another Swapper-related uh, question, so I think it goes um, to Indrek. Um, but whoever wants to reply on that, of course, uh, it should be an uh, open uh, panel discussion. Uh, and in the second part of this uh, panel discussion, we will have more bond uh, uh, finance-related questions again. But uh, we have been like started talking about the license topic already in the beginning of this interview and when it was why it was sold and so on and so on. But uh, now I would be um, concretely interested in what kind of license does Swapper currently hold and I know you can say it's in the frequently asked questions but there is a reason why I want to mention it in the interview right now um, because I would furthermore like to ask you what are the plans for a future um, a license in Estonia you want to apply for probably and maybe you can talk about this a bit. Sure, um, um, about Swapper, so Swapper platform OU as a company it doesn't hold any license at the moment because the business model that we are using is not regulated in Estonia so it doesn't need a license currently but having said that um, the crowdfunding license that EU made Swapper business model does not go under that. But Estonia is building or creating a law to operate, uh, sorry, to regulate our business model. Uh, but uh, the initial plan for Estonia was to have uh, cryptocurrency companies and our claim business model in the same uh, law, but it didn't work out in a way that it would be reasonable for the business model. So what Estonia did is that they took a uh, uh, claim business model uh, 
clauses uh, away or off from the crypto law and they made the crypto law. So currently Estonia, as they have said, the Minister of Finance, that they're building the law or creating the law, but it doesn't have any drafts uh, published after the initial draft with the cryptocurrency um, regulation law. So that means that there is some movement inside the Ministry of Finance, but we don't have any draft published that we can take as a as an initial uh, version of the law. And I don't have a date, and the Ministry of Finance hasn't said any date when the law will be published or, or, or uh, made public or draft made public. So it's currently that, you know, we're pushing our law firm also that, you know, hello, please, uh, you know, can you check has there been any any uh, updates of the laws uh, created or not? So we don't have any law. Uh, the law will come, as Estonia has said. Uh, how or which kind of clauses are in the law? Uh, we don't know that for sure at the moment. And also giving a little background of the Estonia, why it's like that, is that there are a lot of changes in the government and also the finance part is very important at, mo at the moment. So a lot of uh, effort of the Minister of Finance is going uh, there at the moment. So if they're making the budget and arguing that actually during this uh, week we have a uh, all entire country, um, the school teacher uh, is uh, there on strike this uh, week. Um, and then uh, you know, government is, is managing uh, the budget and trying to find a new more money for the uh, teachers. Uh, but uh, with Swapper, I don't know. Should I jump into the new company that we established already or not? Because it, 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 the license question affects that a bit. What do you think, Perhom? Yes, now I'm curious, of course. <laughs> you okay. Started okay. talking about it. Yeah, I, I don't really know what it's about, but uh, now I'm curious. Okay. Okay, so um, what we have told in our um, swap or, uh, communication also is that uh, in order to uh, comply and uh, make uh, new um, business uh, models or business setups, we had to get a license from Estonian uh, regulator in order to uh, start giving out uh, business loans. In Estonia, the giving out the business loan as main activity is regulated activity. So Swapper Platform OU created a total company called SV Finance OU and SV Finance OU applied for the FIU regulation, which is the Financial Intelligent Unit Regulation uh, license and received uh, the license uh, and now Swapper can use the total company to give out um, business loans or loans to legal entities on, on a regular basis. Which also means that Tesla Finance is regulated. It applies all the AML laws, all the sanctions, and all the other laws. There are a lot of procedures, documents, and uh, other things created for SF Finance, and uh, SF Finance needs to um, obey these rules and also make the, you know monitoring and, and uh, screening. Um, so I would say. Swapper platform kind of, uh, as a total company, has a license, but Swapper platform doesn't have a license. Okay, very, very interesting uh, topic, and we will dive deeper into that when we are talking mm -hmm. about the want to finance uh, uh, thing with Poland and Polish loans and the change of the regulation in Poland. So, this is already the, the basis, yeah, the foundation of uh, part two panel discussion uh, in the second video. Um, but maybe one last question for this uh, first part of the discussion. Um, we see it on the website that currently two loan originators are on Swapper, so it's uh, of course Bondo Finance, the main part, and then there is this uh, one leasing, I, I think it's called, yes. Mm. But yes, uh, I would just like to ask you, are there any plans at the moment for onboarding uh, new loan originators? Uh, with the new loan originators, uh, I'm currently constantly looking for new ones, but the issue is that um, the loan originators, uh, they are either struggling uh, or maybe too big or they already have a 
uh, rate financing uh, in place. And having said that, is that we don't want to add loan originators who we might have issues in one year or, or, or something like that. So, so we're doing like quite good deep due diligence for them, from the, for their financials, and also for them, with them owners or the board members, but usually the, the finances is something that is um, troubling us. And that's why we, we haven't onboarded that many, uh, because as I said previously also, I want to make the work to check in advance that rather than just trying to grow and then come back uh, in a year or so with, with issues on, on the platform. Um, and uh, as, as uh, I you know, like, like the approach that Hopper has had from the beginning is that the investor's money or investor's funds is like the very, uh, very, very important and the, like the most important uh, thing that we secure investors' funds, that the investors will not have issues that some platforms had during the COVID, not mm, getting the money back or, or, or uh, some loan or issues going to bankruptcy or, or something like that. So that's kind of the reasons behind why we don't have, I don't know, 10 or 20 loan originators uh, on Swapper. But the work is still ongoing and I hope fully uh, I can uh, or we can uh, onboard uh, new ones uh, relatively soon. Uh, I'm just curious from a personal perspective uh, because I guess you all know from maybe my videos uh, and the personal exchange that I'm also in good contact with Alexander Melis, uh, Ivan Carr. Um, I have been, my, my last uh, record actually I have been in Malaga with, with Alex. Uh, have, it, have there been any talks between Swapper and Ivan Carr? Yeah, we, we have talked, uh, I think, in, like already like a two, two rounds of, of that, uh, but we haven't came to the kind of conclusion, not conclusion, but came, haven't agreed in what cases they would be okay to join. There are some things that we are requ requiring from the loan originators to do in order to secure the funds that they're placing on Swapper platform, and Ibanka hasn't been, um, I don't know, Happy that what we want in a trail or something like that. Okay, okay, I see. I don't want to, no, I don't want to dive too deep into that, but uh, it's just a, a personal question because from my perspective as a uh, private investor, once more, I can only say that I also uh, really um, appreciate uh, the transparency at uh, Ibanka as well, and it is one of the rare loan originators like Wondo Finance and uh, Swapper. Uh, with the Swapper platform, it's one of the rare. The uh, one where I had never any issue with the payments as well, yeah? and they also invite me any time to come to Pass uh, by, uh, have a coffee and discuss uh, uh, problems, whatever, yeah? and, and show everything, show the whole process. So, yeah, this is something I can also uh, mention that I appreciate it uh, as well, which is very positive because I have the feeling I understand the process of my investment I do at the platform swap or wherever. Yeah? Uh, some people might uh, maybe uh, now mention that there have been problems with Ibanka, uh, with the investments through Group here. Yes, it's true, but it's not a problem of Ibanka, yeah, because uh, uh, Ibanka still holds the money of the investors and just waiting if they find a way uh, to pay back uh, around this uh, platform problem. But not talking about other pro platform problems, this is just the reason why I'm sitting here and happy with uh, uh, my investment uh, here. So far, I would uh, suggest that for the first part of this panel discussion, uh, we will make a break right now because uh, already like close to one hour and I know and also the viewers uh, notice uh, meanwhile that my kind of uh, records are sometimes going really deep into it and uh, but for me it's very important this exchange and discussion. Maybe one more thing that came up, I, I have to, sorry, I have to mention this as well because I think it's interesting because it's all learning for me to understand uh, also the different uh, interests and perspectives in, in this uh, whole process of investment, kind of investment. Um, we have been talking about it uh, yesterday evening or I think at the breakfast, I don't know. But um, it was uh, the financing matter and the problem of financing, for example, uh, during COVID. Yeah? Uh, when all the investors uh, left and this was something that uh, I heard 
exactly the same also from Alexander Melis. Yeah? And I think it's not a secret, we can talk about this in the camera because it's transparency and it's uh, just a fact yeah? um, that uh, you had a learning that it's from your interest and your perspective dangerous to finance only through one platform and also through one kind of uh, back financing with the private investors because when COVID started, uh, a lot of uh, private investors um, left P2P industry uh, for different reasons. One, because they have just been worried about everything at this moment, which one has to understand. Yeah? And otherwise, it was also needed, uh, for example, withdraw from different platforms a lot, but not because I worried so much. It was more uh, because I saw a great opportunity in the stock market at this uh, moment. And it's obvious as a private investor that you decide, okay, where can I make the most profit in this? moment, but uh, for you it was a huge issue uh, where you learned it's important to have different sources of funding. Um, maybe you can talk a bit about this because I think it was interesting also. Interesting, yes, it was interesting. It was, the, I think, the biggest lesson and the biggest, uh, biggest lesson we had to learn uh, during, uh, during this uh, eight years in this company uh, since I founded it. It was the hardest mistake and hardest lesson to learn because what uh, happened in COVID, uh, basically at that moment of time when COVID pandemic came and panic started and, and some opportunities on stock market and so on, depends on, on, on the investor of course, we were too dependent on the platform. Uh, meaning that you as an investor, you, like you said, you do diversify uh, where you invest, you don't put your money in, in, in one place. So this is something that we haven't been doing at that specific moment of time well enough. And this, uh, this was the hardest lesson to learn because it was very complicated and very hard to survive. Many loan originators didn't. Uh, and that was the also time when uh, me and Indrek not only weekly but also almost daily were on the phone and, uh, and trying to understand what to do, how to react because what happened uh, when the COVID pandemic started, all the investors came to withdraw the money. So, so on the swapper side. On our side, from, uh, from perspective of borrowers and loans, um, there was like two or three weeks when borrowers delayed the payment, but then they back get back on the track. So from a lending business side, there was no issues that we experienced. Our portfolio were performing and people were paying back. But the issue was we couldn't attract money at that time. And we, we had to decrease even and, and stop the, the, the growth at that moment. And that was, I think, uh, Edward is waving. That was the, the challenging lesson that we had to learn so far. But it was also now when looking back at back to it, I mean, of course, it was very uncomfortable time, a very stressful, when very, very um, hard. Uh, we keep up all, all the promises. We paid out everything. We never get be late, was late with payments, nothing. But uh, it was uh, it was complicated time. It was very turbulent time. But now looking back to it, it was a very necessary lesson to learn. It was amazing lesson that we actually needed because you, well, it was a mistake. We were too, you know, the platforms was on like hype or like uh, cool mm -hmm. thing, popular thing everyone had. And actually in the beginning when we built Swapper, it was like that. We saw, oh, all the guys have it. Okay, let's try. It was like... Yeah. We, we create the platform in one month, we build some system, we launch it and it started to work. It was like, oh, okay. And we wasn't thinking too serious that we also have to keep in mind how we diversify the sources of funding. And uh, yes, it, it is an, uh, an excellent way to attract the money, attract funding for our business. It still is, uh, it hasn't changed. Uh, but our lesson from that is that we shouldn't be so dependent on the platform. And that is also the reason why my uh, responsibilities have changed a lot uh, in the last uh, four years since COVID and a bit before. Uh, I am uh, uh, basically from Wando's side, we're not only attracting money using the platform, but we also have started the quite significant work, work in attracting different kind of funding. And uh, of course, after COVID, we had uh, quite bad financial results. Uh, we survived the turbulent times, but the results was something that you 
you look and you don't understand how to get out of that. No, so first was the investment that I already uh, mentioned, the equity investment that we attracted from NTA Investments. That was the first uh, thing that uh, gave us the opportunity to grow again, because after COVID we couldn't grow anywhere. I mean, uh, we put, uh, we sent to the platform loans that we have issued, but we didn't have money to issue more. So you like stuck in somewhere and you cannot do anything without attracting new money. And that was uh, actually a great lesson because first one, this equity deal, uh, during these last few years, uh, we have also some private investors uh, with a direct contract to us, to Vandu, who have lended mo money to us. Uh, it's not that short term as it is on Swapper. It's uh, medium term investments. Uh, now uh, we are also uh, having, we, we have conclu concluded agreement with the Crowded Hero. Uh, that's one more source, uh, small portion, but still we, we will be using that platform and a bit uh, longer term, uh, but that's just a small portion. And uh, the biggest thing that we are working on for the last year, uh, it's uh, we're going through due diligence process with two institutional investors. Uh, and uh, we wasn't ready for them uh, back uh, back then after uh, after COVID with the horrible results that we had and we, we had to improve in order to show something. And this year is finally the year also the, the, the 2023 is uh, is basically the year when we were able to start the due diligence with the institutional investors, uh, and this is our goal because that's uh, first of all it's long term money it's uh, it's something that we can use for growth. Uh, it's also uh, it also gives us stability because it's a quite a big one. One institutional investor is coming with 10 million, another not so sure yet, but should be around 5 million. So and and you have like specific schedule when when you receive the money and you have you can plan the growth normally without any interruptions any um, volatility in terms of okay in one month we have money in another we don't so it's quite crucial and this is basically the lesson that we learned from covid so at that specific moment on, on, of time it was uh, horrible it was a uh, very stressful period for us uh, but I think we did it with the, we did it gracefully. Uh, we did it indeed, well. Yes, indeed, yeah. uh, but that was also a very necessary lesson, in my opinion, because now we are much in, much more better in that, and and we have learned to attract different kind of investments uh, besides Swapper platform. Unfortunately, uh, that's probably a parsh, partially uh, not so good news from for uh, Swapper investors because we are not planning to put all the loan portfolios that we have on Swapper. Uh, that's, that's something that we will not be doing. Of course, we, we understand that uh, from Swapper platform side, uh, the demand is much higher. It always has been much higher than we can uh, supply. Uh, so uh, we, we, we are trying to, to increase the, the loans that, uh, because there's a demand on, on, the, on that side. But we won't be like putting 100% of loan portfolios on, on platform anymore, and uh, we have uh, different kind of sources now of funding. So we learned the lesson hard, but we learned it. Uh, yeah. 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 So this was now uh, additional. Also, I already wanted to end the first part, but I thought it is very related to the first questions, and it came up in my mind. But hearing that already. A lot more questions come up in my mind, okay. but this we will definitely put now in the in the second part, and I think it makes also sense that we make maybe twenty minutes uh, break right now to okay. have another coffee and uh, yes. heat up the room a bit uh, because it's getting a bit uh, cold again. Cold Spanish in, people. In, in, yeah, I'm not <laughs> used to that anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, however, I have a lot of questions in mind for the second part, and then we will also come more to the figures and numbers and uh, reports of uh, Wando Finance of Swap and all these details. And uh, yeah, as I said, I know it's a lot of talking in my videos always, but uh, in not such a straight structure as it is popular on, on YouTube normally from the influencers. But for me, it's very important also to, to, to listen and, and get these uh, feelings between what is uh, said. Yeah? And, and, and I'm also looking forward to um, that uh, exchange with uh, the audience once more. Um, so uh, always happy to exchange in the comments. And uh, if you liked it, uh, yeah. I would uh, ask you for a thumbs up and uh, see you soon in the second part. Goodbye from uh, Madrid for this moment. <laughs>